Hello everyone. Today is part 18 of our core studies, our core knowledge studies. First part, we just we just jumped up and, and tap danced all over evolution's faith. It's a faith. It's a faith that you come from nothing. The absolutely nothing. The whole universe came from nothing. And here we are today. Nothing is more powerful than nothing. And that's what trips most of us up. It was the explosion of nothing. We tap danced on that. Now, we are talking from the book of Genesis, the beginning, how everything was created in early man's history. We just finished talking about an event that happened between Noah and his son, Ham, and, his, and what occurred happened to his grandson and now we are going to talk about the beginning and how the different tribes spread out among the world because remember all the tribes come from Noah's three sons and we begin at Genesis 9 25 he said cursed be Cain and a servant of servants shall he be to his brothers this is because an incest occurred theor theoretically between Ham and his mother, Noah's wife, and they had Canaan. So yeah, he also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth. And mind you, what I just said about the Canaan thing, uh, you can look up the verse a day right prior to this. I talk about that and show the scripture where we get that understanding. So again, he also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 900 years. And 50 years and he died now I explained this in previous verses but look at this chart again it literally shows how the atmosphere had changed drastically from the beginning of creation the Lord said to his he shall not always strive with man and they should only live to be 120 years that was for our sake. Man does, can do a lot of evil when they live very, very long. But even scientists today have seen that the atmosphere of Earth was 50% more oxygen. Early, early Earth. They say millions. We say pre-flood. Pre-flood, there was 50% more oxygen in the air. The atmosphere was completely different. A rainbow wasn't even seen until after the flood that's how vastly different the air was at the time and with the air being that different look how you see how from Adam all the way to Noah or all the way to Lamech people lived a huge amount of time and then it started to taper off it tapers 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 and then you have the normal a hundred and some years, 110 years was Joseph. God kept his promise about keeping, limiting their years to 120. It didn't happen right away, but it did happen. So Noah lived a long time. But what is very important about him living so long, you wonder, well, did we lose the translation of the Bible? Do we? How did they know the beginning of all this history and stuff? Well, if you look at the beginning, Adam and Noah's lifespan was not far apart. If you look at where it dropped down to, there was probably only, Noah's father, Lamech, could have actually known Adam. Adam was still alive when Noah's father, Lamech, was alive. And then maybe a hundred years later, Lamech had Noah. So they could have passed down the beginning of what occurred for creation to Noah. And because Noah lived 
950 years, that means that his lineage literally drops down to Abraham. Do you see that? It literally drops down to Abraham. And Abraham could have passed that knowledge on. And then eventually you get it to, to Moses. So the, there was not a lot of gaps of information that was being transferred because people lived so long at a time. Abraham even mentioned, they asked that when he was old, they said, man, you lived to be so old. And he said, but my forefathers, oh, I, I lived a short time compared to my forefathers. Correction, it was Jacob who was asked about his age. In Genesis 47, 8, it says, And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many days are the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their sojourning. So he lived 130 years while he was talking to Pharaoh, but he's saying, I don't have nowhere near as many years as my fathers had. So it was Jacob and not Abraham. Correction. How the people of old used to live. Abraham shared that with them. So yes. And Abraham lived what? 175 years? He shared that knowledge of how his forefathers were much, much older than he. So let's continue. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And this is chapter 10, verse 1. Sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiris. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Rif, Riftath, and Tagarm, the sons of Javan. Elisha, Tarshish, Ketum, and Dodanim. From these the coastland people spread in their lands, each with his own language, by their clans, and their nations. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Ramah, and Sabtica, the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. We're going to talk about Nimrod. Nimrod is extremely important. One of the reasons why I'm doing this core Bible study, these core knowledge, you need to know about Nimrod. Because he's very pertinent for today. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Eric, Akkad, and Kana, in the land of Shinar. From that land he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ea, Kala, and Reseb between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. Egypt fathered Ladim, Anamim, Lehebim, Naphtahim, Pathrusim, Kaslisim, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarim. Canaan fathered Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Girgashites, the Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Arvadites, the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. Afterward, the clans of the Canaanites dispersed, and the territory of the Canaanites extended from Sidon in the direction of Gerar as far as Gaza, and in the direction of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham by their clans, their languages, their lands, and their nations. To Shem also, the father of children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth, children were born, the sons of Shem, Elam, Asher, Apashad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arpashad fathered Shalah, and Shalah fathered Eber, 
To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan fathered Amadab, Shelef, Harzamebeth, Jerah, Hadron, Uzal, Dikla, Obel, Abimeel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jabab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Their territory in which they live extended from Mesha in the direction of Sephar to the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem by their clans, their languages, their lands, and their nations. These are the clans of the sons of Noah according to their genealogies in their nations, and from these the nations spread abroad on the earth after the flood. So that's how they all spread out. Now, Genesis chapter 11 begins, and we're going to stop here. But Genesis chapter 11 begins with a clear statement. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about Nimrod and Babylon. It's very important. It's very important. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our understanding in this word. We love you, Lord. You take so much good care of us. And thank you for, for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us your son. May many be saved, Lord. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.